to Face the Facts. Welcome to game night. This is Nick Face with Tom Smith and Phil Healy. Welcome in, gentlemen. Yo. Hello, so hello. We have, a, uh, we have a Thursday night football game for the Patriots. They're going to be playing the L.A. Rams. Um, I want to first go over a recap here of what happened from this past weekend's blowout, as a matter of fact, win against the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. So that was pretty awesome to see. I thought going into the game, the Patriots had a good chance at winning. Their coaching staff is obviously much superior. They have more depth than uh, the, the Chargers and everything. But, you know, it's been one of those seasons where it's hit or miss. It's either they're going to come out guns blazing and they're going to be fine. Good pun intended on that one. And then sometimes they come out flat. Well. I think we can sum up this past weekend or this past weekend's game against the Chargers as the gun show. So it's because uh, Gunnar, Gunnar Oshesky and the special teams for the Patriots just dominated every single ounce of the Chargers uh, throughout the game. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Scrooge Smith um, over there, who uh, is going to give us a little insight on what he thought of uh, watching the game this past weekend. Yeah. Um... <laughs> It was a crazy. It was a crazy game to watch if you if you missed it. Um, I mean, but st- statistically, uh, Belichick does fares pretty well against young quarterbacks. No, uh, Belichick and the Patriots, I should say, fare pretty well against young quarterbacks. So statistically, you know, it was in favor of the Patriots. Um, the Chargers had looked good at the beginning of the year, and now it seems like they've kind of fallen flat. Big time. Um, yeah, I will say uh, a big a big part of that was Gilmore's defense on Keenan Allen. Uh, that was that was a big help. Thank um, you. I think the special- Gilmore uh, coming back has helped the Patriots tremendously on the defensive end, with um, giving them more solid foundation of what we've known for from the secondary and being uh, so dominant and. We're seeing why it, Gilmore was very missed in, with the defense when he was out on injury for a little bit of time. Uh, Phil, uh, any any overall thoughts on what you saw from this past weekend? In your well, I, I will echo what Tom was saying about Gilmore. Of course. It's, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. And when you what, don't have an opinion like me, you have new? to tag on to. Uh, no, I think it's one of those things where Gilmore wasn't really playing that well this year, I felt. Maybe like one or two games he was decent. But, like, the last two games seemed like, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen. It seemed like, oh, these are pretty heavy hitters. And he's held them – I mean, even if they – you know, because I think DeAndre had, like, six catches for X amount of yards. But nothing, it seemed like, backbreaking. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't a play you saw where, um, you know, something um, – like, a, it, his receiver was really um, making a crazy impact. I also want to say uh, – what's his name? Uh, Winovich. Uh, was pretty great. I mean, he had that interception, but he was pretty great. Dedrick Wise, like the defense itself, was pretty good at smothering. The special the team of... block. I mean, oh that yeah, was pretty awesome going into uh, halftime. Was it, it was twenty eight nothing half, right? I think yeah. it was like twenty one nothing. Yeah, twenty one and, and yeah, one. Yeah. Only like a few seconds left. They missed that kick. They block it. Uh, and the Patriots run it back, and they end up scoring the touchdown right there. Well, even go back a little bit uh, further. Go back to the drive uh, before when the Patriots scored. They were in the red zone, I think, or just out of the red zone because it was like third and 19. Yep. Uh, and then uh, they got a face they, – they were <laughs> – they were kind of saved by a stupid charger penalty. Yeah, they, uh, really like, and they made some you know, very face. costly mistakes the Chargers made in, yeah. in that game from everything. Um I do particularly think they have a they have some guys on their roster that are pretty good, but what I, I one of them is Hunter Henry, and I think that he would do amazing in a Patriot system um, come this off season. I know that they're interested in him for a tight end standpoint. Um, I didn't expect a blowout like this like this particular game. You know, forty five nothing. That was not on my radar whatsoever. You even got a chance to see Jared Stidham connect with Gunnar Olszewski at the end of the game, and Olszewski scoring another touchdown, uh, basically, from that as well. So you, you saw Stidham with the touchdown. You saw Cam Newton be pretty pretty good. You know, I, I'd give him an A in his performance from there. Um, the, the big question here is the duplication. Can this happen again in a short week against an, uh, an L, uh, 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 L.A. Rams team, who, in my opinion, is far superior 
than what the Chargers are. So that's where we're at right now with what we think is going to happen leading into this game here this evening. Truthfully, it's a must-win game for the Patriots. I think you guys will probably say that. The Patriots can't afford to lose any more games this season. Right now, um, they are – is it five and six? No, six and six. They're six, and six and six. Okay, so this game would put them over the 500 mark for, I think, the first time this season. I believe so. Yeah. Right? No, I two and one yeah. Well, they were like – yeah, they were two and one and two and two at one point. So the question here is which team here shows up? I mean, I think that this was a big, big momentum-building win. I will say for the for the Patriots, I, I don't particularly love the Rams. I think Sean McVay is one of the most overrated coaches in the uh, NFL. You saw the domination from the Super Bowl when Belichick completely uh, destroyed him defensively with their matchups and everything. It was like what ten to thirteen to three performance, but Belichick completely outschooled McVay with everything that he was trying to call up for. So. I'm curious to see if it's going to be the same kind of uh, alignments and gameplay and game call that was done from the Super Bowl from 2018. So I'm curious to see what we see tonight. I think it'll uh, be a little different. Um, but I think it's going know. to have to be, but I think the same kind of mentality is going to go into this game like it was for that game against the Super Bowl. Well, and statistically, though, with a short week, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm going back to statistics again. Uh, but, like, team, teams that have such a big win like that, like the Patriots did, and then to go into a short week, it usually doesn't turn out well for the team that ends up winning. But at the same time, they don't have to travel either. See, that's, so, that's what I think is a big factor here, is that they were already there in California. They've been there. They didn't have to travel, really. So – I give the Patriots the upper hand here. I'm going to go out here on a limb and say that the Patriots are going to get the job done tonight. I don't want to all be overconfident here. It's going to be a tough battle. But if they show up and if they are well prepared and they have the same kind of tools and, and gameplay like they just did from the Chargers, I think that they can beat the Rams. What I do like, what we did, what I did see that we didn't talk about yet on this show is – you may potentially have a two-man wrecking crew here right now, and that's Damian Harris and Sonny Michelle came back last week, and Michelle and Harris had quite a great game. I hope that this can continue. Now, to see a back-to-back -back great performance from those two running backs, if we see that, then we may be in a situation here where we can actually start talking about playoffs. I'm not going to say it right now, but – I don't know if you guys looked at the Patriots' schedule. I'm seeing the other teams' kind of you know, schedules upcoming and all. They really do legitimately have a chance. Well, this is like their easier portion, isn't it? And yeah, this is the easier this stretch. Game, basically, yeah. Because I, then, I, you have your, then you have your, uh, uh, your, your Miami, your Jets, and your Bills. That's not to discount the Bills or Miami, but I do think the Patriots can beat them. I have not been impressed whatsoever with the Buffalo Bills. I will say that 100% right now. They're an odd well, team. Patriots they're an odd team. They, they've gotten lucky, too. They're a fraud they, team. They, they played some pretty good teams. I don't know if they're a fraud, they, but, yeah. They, they played some pretty good teams. I mean, you, 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 they played San Francisco, who were missing a bunch of key players, so who knows what would happen if, you know, those players weren't out for San Francisco. And, I mean, they, they you know um, – they played uh, – I mean, they, they lost. Barely, they barely beat us. I yeah. also no. think the Steelers are a fraud team, to tell you the truth. And what I mean by fraud, I don't mean – I just think that they're not as good as their record. That's what I mean by that. So I, sorry, I think you're one – I don't no, mean sorry. to have such a, a big <laughs> word that goes out there. I just – I don't – They're don't fakers know, to me. I, I don't – they don't scare me at all. I well, supposedly their D is pretty good. I don't, I don't know if I agree with you on that one. I mean, we, we've, I've said it a couple times before, but you know, the Steelers are, Steelers are always there in the playoffs, and yeah, they might, they might choke every now and then, or mostly. Um, but I don't know. They, they, they've played. I like, I mean, I like played, how we have a difference in opinion here. It's not good to agree all the time with stuff. So, Tom, no, I mean, that's great. But you know? I don't, I don't, I don't think 
they've they've had an easy schedule this year. Because I mean, they played they played Tennessee when Tennessee was at the top of their season and ended up beating them. And uh, they did you, did you see what happened to Tennessee this past weekend? That was no. embarrassing. The Browns kicked their ass. Well, I, how about the Giants beating the Seahawks? And yeah, the Giants never did. Too. They, I mean, I think everyone's coalescing right now. Like every team is hitting their hitting a bit of their stride or down. Like it's going to be interesting when it gets to the playoffs because I mean, any team that plays the Giants are going to have a hard time, and they're going to, the Giants are going to host a playoff game, mind you. Yeah. Not that that really matters during COVID, but well, as much. If if the if the Patriots beat the Dolphins and the Bills, they're oh, definitely they in the playoffs. Right? Yeah. They're definitely in the playoffs. If I can't I can't come out and say that the Pittsburgh Steelers are the number one football team in the NFL. I just, I can't. Well, I mean, I think Kansas City, I, it was I mean, I would say Kansas wise, City. Yes, I still think that Kansas City right now has the toughest pretty much matchup, but I'll even say that Kansas City hasn't impressed me whatsoever this year. I think Mahomes is, is a good quarterback, but they just toot his horn way too he's, much. He's better than good. Like, he's considerably, I mean, he's pretty damn good. He's not elite. He's pretty good, Phil. I'll, uh, I'll totally say that. He, but he's, he's, he's tier two. He's tier two. He's tier two? Cool. Who's tier one? Who's tier one? I mean, Brady. I guess. Brady, who, and Brady, who else would you put Rogers. in there? I mean, Rogers. I, I, is Mahomes uh, at that level yet? I, I, oh, I, personally, I can't say he is because those guys have longevity over this guy who's only been in the league for three years. So let me see what the sample size is. Well, this is his, yeah, this is his fourth year, I think, right? Or after, or after he's done another Super Bowl. It's only one Super Bowl. So, folks, you got to pump the brakes here. I mean, I guess, but it's within, like, three years. And he made it to the AFC Championship his first yeah, year as a starter. Yeah, but Brady did it in what? <laughs> did it within No, what? no. <laughs> I know. He did. He went there. Uh, but keep in mind, Brady also had a great – he didn't make it necessarily offensively. He made it based on being a kind of system quarterback – you you uh, put you put Mahomes underneath any other any you could put Mahomes under another coach and he he would not be where he is right now, and I'm not saying Andy Reid is uh, a good coach. Andy Reid. I don't is know. I don't know about that. I mean, I think uh, Andy Reid is an Reed offensive is minded coach, but uh, no, I don't know, man. I I think if he were like if he were playing for the Lions, like maybe the Lions would be different. But I think any team with him on it would be constituted differently because there's so many things you can do. Well, they would be yeah, different, high, but I, really, you know. I don't. I would not. If you put, put in, Mahomes into the Patriots system, they would be a significantly better team than they are right now. Yeah, so, I mean, and also you'd run things so fun. differently. But if Mahomes is put into like an LA Chargers system or a Jets system or yeah. something, no, it would probably not. He'd be an average quarterback. I think. He is surrounded by good tools and everything too. You know, he does. There are a lot of great players. Or I will. I'll, I'll attest to that. But you could always say. I know with Brady, he never really had that. He I mean, didn't he have had Randy Moss. He, he had, had Randy Moss for a couple of years, and he had Gronk for his, almost his whole career. For, um, yeah, but he didn't. I mean, he, you know, he didn't. Mahomes uses Travis Kelsey way more than he needs to. I mean, I guess I, I would. I would make the argument that Tyree Kill was more of a crutch, or at, like well, a bomb. I mean, both both of them really are because he. But they're know, also his weapons. I mean, that's what he has. Yeah, but he has more weapons, weapons than just yeah, them two. I, I, I will say that he oh, has more weapons built. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Welcome, yeah, Patrick I, Mahone show. No. Yeah, exactly. No, I, yeah, I'll get on. That's fine. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. That's so, all. should my confidence level not be as high tonight on the Patriots getting a victory here? So, I want to hear what you guys think. I'll say my confidence level, I, I give the Patriots an 80%. I'm going to get say it's – I'm 80% certain that they can get a win tonight. I'll go out on a limb and I can say that. Uh, I Is that I too think, high? I think the not having to travel high too high, yeah. Huh? Is a is a big key factor. Um, but also Cal California did shut down from COVID, so we weren't even sure if this game was gonna happen or not. Um, yeah, that's a good point. LA especially, yeah. Uh, but, Nancy Pelosi gave the okay as far as I can as far as far as I heard. But she's more of a northern California. I know you're okay. 
I know you're making like a northern. I'm going to say. Never mind. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that she said what? that it was okay. You take I'm it gonna, whatever you I'm want. I'm going to give them a. I'm going to give them a 77 percent chance. Right. Oh, of it happening. Oh, of winning. Them winning. Yeah, them winning. I, I, I like that. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I don't think. I think we all, LA's. We all think they're going to get the win then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think LA's a good okay. team. LA's a good team, but I think the Pats are kind of riding on something right now. And if it's going to be a, if it's going to be like a drag out fight, I think the Pats are in a good spot. I think uh, I think yeah. the I think the blowout is a, a key motivator for uh, yeah. Cam. I think that's I think I think that's going to be a big help too. I think I'll go that, further. I think it's for the whole the team. Things that I will agree here with Tom. I think the confidence build of I can get the job done is now in Cam Newton's mindset. So I think that that's going to help propel him to get to another victory here. So and, and I think that's, that's I think the thought. defense I think the defense is going to be even more solid than they were last week or Sunday, I should say. Yep. Um, I think they I mean, had no points given up. So yeah. we shall see. They were the uh, third highest fantasy score. I do want to ask you guys too. I, I want to transition from the Patriots, but I want to talk about the Bucks here because they're coming off of a bye week here, and they're at seven and five right now in their season. We talked about it a little bit in our last show, but I want to see where we're at with how we feel this team really is. There's been some. There was another controversial piece that came out with news about Brady this past week that I'll. I'll uh, share with you. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but a lot of people were pretty uh, pissed off when they heard that Brady had just gotten a million dollar plus uh, new yacht for his lovely uh, place down in Florida. And that's after TV 12, uh, that company got over a million dollars in the PPE uh, forgiveness stuff right there. So is that fair criticism? I want to ask you guys that. Is that fair for people to criticize what okay. Brady is purchasing and stuff? Or do people need to pretty much mind their own business? Is the media kind of making a story about much to do about nothing? If he used, if he used the money that he got from that to purchase. That's what we don't know. Sole, well, yeah. For, if he did it for the sole purpose of getting, or if he's using that to leverage to pay for that, I, then sure, you can criticize him all you want. It just, I this think is it's just a matter of a it's rich probably guy. A little bit, yeah. It's probably a little bit of both. It doesn't I mean, look very good. You know, uh, that's one thing that there's a lot of people out there struggling with trying to get by with very, very little, you know, and to see somebody go out, granted, he's a multimillionaire. He has all right to do whatever he wants to do. Your public like image murder a hobo, is important. Yes. There you go. Your image is so important right now on, you know, things that you should or should not personally do. You know, I know for me, if I was uh, struggling or whatnot, I went out and got myself some extravagant thing. I I'm sure people would be like, wait a minute, didn't he just get something from something or, or, or whatnot? How the heck did he get, you know, that? So, well, I mean, that's what you get when you give to Toys for Tots. You get a little something back. That's what I always say. Well, I mean, does, little... but does he really, does he really need a yacht? Of course not. Does anyone need a yacht? Does he That's really need question. to play football right now? No, he doesn't. So uh, my, my other point here to ask on the seven and five thing is, are the Bucks going to make the playoffs here? I mean, they have another uh, game that's upcoming this weekend. I can't remember exactly who they're playing, but I thought it was a pretty decent team. Um, let me look. I'm just – I'm kind of shocked that they're 7-5. and five, to tell you. Uh, They're playing the Vikings. Yeah, I thought they're actually a pretty decent team. Yeah. And the, uh, and the Chiefs are playing the Dolphins. All right, so we want the Chiefs to win, I would think, if we're Patriots. If, uh, I mean, I, if I, anything, I yeah. And, uh, and the Steelers are playing the Bills, so that's going to be a good game too. All right, so we want the Steelers uh, – wow. So I need to root for the Steelers. I need to root for uh, – That's the Sunday Chiefs. night game. The, That'd, uh, be one. That'd be a good one. So what do we think? Uh, do they come back and they get the win, Tampa? Or is this just basically a coin flip here on figuring out what the heck is Tampa going to be doing? I personally am surprised they're seven and five. I don't know what you guys feel. Yeah, I mean, it seems like I think give or take another win, I think you're, they're in kind of where they're, they're going to be. Maybe they end up nine and seven or 10 and six. They might even have the same record as um, – 
the past. Technically, it's only a game ahead. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could say it's uh, it's not too Tom Brady standard, but, you know, different Tom Brady, different blame, team. How much of a blame do you think Brady gets with this 7-5 and five record? Uh, yeah. A little. I, mean, I would only say as much as the rest of the team, I guess. I, I wouldn't say I mean, it's I all his, yeah. fault, his fault. There were a couple things, you know. The the I remember the Thursday night game that he had. Oh, he didn't play. know it was fourth down. Four, yeah. Four. yeah. Well, you know, did we? What was the status of that? Did they confirm or did deny he that? The play call. He did not know. He thought that that was he had yeah. a third down and he had one more chance to win the game. Yeah, well, that's that's definitely on him. Mentally, he was mentally not there. That's a parcel um, moment right there. I think this has been a challenging circumstance for Brady. I think he thought things were going to be a whole lot better into a new system. So if I, I'm just trying to get into Tom Brady's mindset and everything. And truthfully, I do think that there is some sort of a regret from him on choosing to go to the box. I do. So I think he's going to – stick it out I think he's still going to be there next season but I wouldn't be surprised if it's just one more year next year and that's it here's here's my question if if he had stayed in New England do you think Gronk would have came out of retirement no no because Gronk didn't want to play for Belichick and also like you know doesn't want maybe doesn't want to be in New England for the winner maybe he's fine with and being I, I really do believe. No, I mean, I'm not trying to be. I think that's Brady part of it. had enough of Belichick, and so did Gronk. I wouldn't even be surprised if Julian Edelman's had enough of Belichick and, so, and some stuff too. But I will say that these guys, for whatever reason, they have the ego where it gets in their way at times, and they need to understand that they need to respect what the coach's decision is and everything. <clears throat> So that's what I'm trying to uh, kind of get into what we could actually do. You know, if we go back and forth and try and determine if Brady would have been better here in New England or going elsewhere. I just don't think he would have stayed. Well, well think, yeah, think about it this way. Bill also kind of, Bill has his own ego as well. And he, I think he pushes a lot of people out the door and, you know, if he doesn't – with Brady, you had the biggest, like, bargaining chip to bring people over. And, you know, it, or to win something. But, yeah, yeah I don't uh, – yeah, probably right. I mean, Julian Elliman, is he ready to play tonight? I forget. I know he was – No, uh, he's done for the season. Is he officially done for the season? I, I thought, thought they were – the, I thought that's what they said after the injury. No, I think they – I think they said something to the effect like he could be coming back. I think that's what – but who knows? I mean, there's, I thought, there's, I mean, I don't know if we really. I mean, we could use him, but I don't know if we really absolutely need him. You know, at this point, at this stage in the season, I mean, I don't think it's really going to make too much of a difference. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. Just, just thinking about how things have looked from afar, just from everything I again I just don't think that Brady thought he was getting himself into a situation where it was going to be like this I thought he I think he was under the impression that he could have potentially run the table or had a record that was maybe the lowest it would have been would be maybe 12 and 4 13 and 3 something like that you really Uh, think I don't know I I think he expected different I do yeah Oh, we'll see. I don't know. I think he's where he. Uh, I think everything kind of, uh, kind of came to where it needed to come to. I guess. I don't know. Um, I can't think of anything else on football that I wanted to cover on this. Um, I did want to ask you guys. Uh, there's really nothing hockey, basketball. That's not back in for another like week or two. So there's really nothing to really say on on anything that on that point. We do have the Major League Baseball is going through their off season with things. I, I, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what the Red Sox are going to look like with everything. I know one particular name that's been up for a, uh, maybe a, a return would be John Lester. I don't know if you guys would potentially welcome that, uh, welcome John Lester back to Boston. He's going to be 36. He's been very durable throughout his career. He's never really been hurt. Should the Red Sox entertain that? 
Can he throw to first base? <laughs> I don't I, – I, hey, if you can get out there and give me innings and not be a has-been like some of the other bums, I'll take John Lester back. I never wanted John Lester to leave in the first place. I mean, no, he's, I, he's, I don't think he anyone did. He hasn't done too oh, yeah. terribly for the Cubs. I mean, to, to, to Tom's point right there, I actually say – I actually say John Lester was super valued to the Cubs. And I say that because he helped them win their first World Series in 108 years. So I, I can say that Lester delivered on what the Cubs were expecting him to do. Why the Cubs aren't bringing him back is because they're kind of just blowing everything up over there. They're going with a whole new rebuild, basically, to try and get themselves back on top. Uh, they have uh, Theo Epstein is no longer the president over there. He stepped aside. Oh, so wow. He's taking, a, he'll, he's taking a year off of baseball, which is shocking. Huh. Um, I mean, if he David if Roth he can. Is their uh, manager and stuff over there. Uh, um, I'm just very surprised at how quiet it's been outside of, you know, Cora being the big move here with the Red Sox. They have a well, lot I guess- of work to do, and it's really there's, – there's been really nothing going on. I saw today that the um, Blue Jays are showing interest in uh, – I always forget his first name, but Turner from the Dodgers, Justin Turner. Do you know he's 36 years old, Justin Turner? I would have never known. Yeah, he was a late bloomer for baseball. Yeah, he acts like he's five. I I mean, I know he's been in the league for a while because he was on the Mets for forever. Um, but he didn't really blow up until like his second to last season with the Mets. Right. So I still think that there's a big move out there for the team. I just don't know what it is. It's very difficult during this whole pandemic and everything. There's not that many moves. It's not like basketball and it's not like football with free agency. As soon as it hits, there's all these act, these moves that hit. And this is what baseball has got to figure out. They have to kind of do it in my opinion, how basketball and hockey and the rest of uh, and um, uh, football do it because you have instant action. This whole waiting for four months and it's scattered out and spread out is boring and dull and it needs to be fixed. You know, they, that's one thing that they can do to help captivate their audience and keep them excited when it's spread out this long, you know, when you have the world series ending basically at the end of October and then you have November, December, January, February, and then March. It's spring training. That's four or five months where you can go with maybe a signing, ah. not a signing. All this speculation. I, it's it's got to change. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's a, it's a drag for what was considered uh, America's, America's game. Now, the other thing uh, that they've, they've put a couple pieces out there and try and figure out is the million-dollar question is what the Red Sox want to do here in center field. Do you entertain bringing Jackie Bradley back on a contract, or do you look elsewhere? Phil? Phil? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I, frankly, I like Jackie Bradley. Fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he's worth the money per se in a lot of ways, but I don't know, maybe you re- restructure something or try to, is his contract completely up or can you yeah, trade it's a free him? agent? So they would have to yeah. give him two, three, four, four years. I mean, uh, you probably, do, you're probably going to to keep him. You'd have to spend more money than you'd like. And I think they're looking to get away from that right now. I really but, like George Springer. And I think if you want, yeah, to I think it'd be play, great. I think that that would be somebody that I personally would go and try my best. I think you have a better bat with Springer and your yeah, you have more of a bad. you have more of a package deal. You have a better yeah, bat, more well-rounded. Glove yeah. that's pretty damn good. You know, Bradley's glove. I'll give him that. Yeah, no, he's got a good glove. Yeah. But I think a better player overall is Springer. Tom, do you bring Bradley back, or you look elsewhere? Uh, I think I don't know. We we need a better bat. And I was looking at his stats from this year, and he actually hit over 280, which was shocking to me after looking back from it. I just don't think that's going to happen again. No. I think this was a fluke year. Yeah, I do Um, too. I just don't think it's worth investing in in a guy that's about a 220 hitter. I, I, I would go with quality, and I think Springer's that. 
Or I think we can. I think we can. I think we can lose a little bit of the glove to gain some bat. Yep, especially without Mookie, I think you got to really entertain that as well too. So if if Springer is the piece that kind of, if Mookie's not going to be there, or Springer comes in and kind of replaces that loss right there. I personally would be okay with that. Now, I, he's, I no Mookie. he's no Mookie, I, but I mean, I, it, it's definitely, he kind of gives me that Shane Victorino vibe. George Springer. I, I like, I like, I like, the, um, wow. I can't talk right now. I like the idea because he, I, I like, I really can't talk right now. I, um, I like signing outfielders that have, played in Fenway multiple times before um, because it gives me more faith in them because they know how to – they have some idea of how to play the, the bounces and how to play the field and everything. Yeah, so who knows what's going to happen here for, for the free agency from stuff, but we will keep you up to date with all the different inside and stuff that uh, is going on from everything, and hopefully there's some action soon. You know, I hope I hope that happens. Um, again, go Patriots. We hope that they can pull out a win here and become seven and six on their season, and then hopefully have that chance of actually being playoffs. We want to talk playoffs. We want to get to that point, um, and hopefully they can have a, a good rest of the season here. Yeah, because if they don't have, if they don't reach the playoffs, who knows what we're going to have to talk about? <laughs> Nothing exactly. <laughs> Nothing. It'd be awful. Basketball. <laughs> And I think that'll do it here on another <laughs> lovely episode of, of Face the Facts. We will ha- <laughs> we will see you all here once again um, before uh, Christmas and all that stuff comes in. So um, go Pats. For Nick Face, Tom Smith, and Phil Healy, we will see you next time here on the other on this wonderful virtual way of doing Face the Facts. <laughs> Goodbye. Adios.